During this time, with energy and climate crisis, sodium fast reactors may be our best allies. These reactors emit no greenhouse gases, they can optimize the uranium resources, providing us thousand years of electricity, and reduce our nuclear waste. Good morning everyone, my name is Benjamin Jordi. I'm a second year PhD student working for the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, known as CEA. As you can see, my PhD title is Scale Effects Analysis on the Thermal Hydraulic Behavior of Impeding Jet in Sodium Fast Reactors. This title is a bit scary for me too, but don't worry, we will talk about it. In France, CEA is involved with the development of a fourth generation of nuclear power plants, especially the sodium fast reactors. To avoid building expensive and complex scale one prototype, we build reduced size models and develop codes to simulate the behavior of the whole reactor. You can ensure that your code is correctly predicting what happened by comparing it to the experimental results you get from the reduced size model. That's cool and cheaper until you realize that once you know how your system behaves on a small scale, you still have no idea of the global phenomena happening in the reactor. And you cannot ensure that your code is correctly predicting every phenomena. It's like cooking a chicken in the oven. If you have a one kilogram chicken, you know you have to cook it for one hour at 200 degrees. Now, let's say I have a five kilogram turkey. What am I gonna do? Because the scale is multiplied by a factor of five. Am I, gonna, am I gonna multiply the time scale by five, cooking it for five hours? Am I gonna multiply the temperature scale by five, cooking it at 1000 degrees? That's the question I'm trying to answer. Developing a scale effects methodology to transport results from my chicken to my turkey, or in my case, from the radius size model to the whole reactor. So now we know what a scale effect means, but we have other words to explain. In sodium fast reactors, you have a lot of hot jets coming out of the core. The jets are merging into a big one, impinging a structure, and then diffusing into the vessel. This is why we talk about impinging jets. Then, in the, uh, the temperature in the vessel is a bit lower than the jets one, just enough to create buoyancy effects. To know what is a buoyancy effect, we can talk about the exhaust gas going out of your car, especially during winter. You can see that the gas is going out in a horizontal way, but then you can see that it starts to go upward. This is because of buoyancy. A hot fluid is lighter than a cold one. In my case, I got kind of the same problem. My jet is supposed to go downward, but if inertia is too weak or buoyancy too strong, my jet will start to go upward. As this phenomenon is directly related to the temperature of the fluid, we talk about thermal hydraulic behavior of impeding jets. Why is that a problem, you could ask? Well, think about the paper clip in the corner of your desk. You fold it once, twice, and so on, and then it breaks. This is what we call mechanical fatigue. In my case, we have kind of the same problem. If the jet goes upward, it modifies the flow pattern in the vessel, leading to thermal fluctuation. The components get hot and cold, so they dilate and contract, etc., until they break. So now you understand why it is an issue, and we need to, to do this scale effect study in the thermohydraulic behavior of the impeding jet in the sodium fast reactors. To study this phenomenon, I am using a mock-up named MICAS. MICAS is a reduced size model of a sodium fast reactor. Of course, just one mock-up is not enough to do a scale effect study. To do so, I designed a new mock-up, downsized from the already existing mock-up MICAS. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Morito. It would have been too easy if I could just replicate MICAS at lower scales. So I did some geometrical simplification in order to study the rays of my jet without other disturbing phenomena. Thanks to Morito, I have two years to explain how I will extrapolate results from downsized model to the reactor scale thanks to force ratio known as dimensionless number. And then maybe I will be able to explain why it is a really bad idea to cook your turkey for five hours at 1000 degrees. Thank you for your attention.